Hello, welcome to my channel. Another booby file reads Playboy for the articles. This is week one of Garb August, the greatest event each year on book two. And I am one of your co-hosts. This event was created by the evil mastermind, screaming, creaming, Ollie. I will leave a link to everyone's shows down below so you can check out their channels. All the co-hosts are absolutely great and you should subscribe to all of them. And what is week one of Garb August themes? The theme is category romance or men's adventure, where we're all going to be reading category romances or men's adventure or none of the above. You know, each, each, each trashy co-host is going to do their own thing. But what have I been reading for Garb August? Now, I started off the week before Garb August, so there's a couple non-trashy books in this week one, and you're just gonna have to uh, live with that discrepancy. And what was the first book that I read. It was an audiobook, The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It was written in 1912. He had already been well established in his um, Sherlock Holmes stories by this point. He was about 52, somewhere around there. And this is, it would qualify as a men's adventure, I think, if it was part of Garbacus. You have a journalist wooing a young woman who he wants to marry, but she does not think he's worthy. He is just a journalist. So he meets up with a uh, professor who has sort of a, a rough reputation, who has some really strange ideas about what he found in the jungles of South America. And what he discovered was a lost world where the, the ground has risen up and created a plateau that cannot be climbed very easily. And on top of this plateau, there are dinosaurs. There are ape men. So this journalist and this professor and another man go out to explore this lost world. And yes, it is an adventure story. And why, yes, I know it, it's not really plausible, but it has dinosaurs. It has ape men. What more could you want? I did enjoy this book. It is not his best novel. I still think those go to um, his Sherlock Holmes stories, but you know, it was a pretty decent adventure story. After that, I listened to another audio book and I'm gonna show you the physical book because um, I have something to hold out. This is Foundation and Empire by Isaac Asimov. It is the second book in the Foundation trilogy. Trilogy. This was written in the early 50s um, when Isaac Asimov was still a rather young man. And it is the story of a far future where there are humans have spread out across the galaxy. And an empire is slowly falling. It was the fall was predicted by a man named Harry Seldon, who created this um this uh psychohistory. This is a way to predict the few the mass movements of people in, in history not an individual person's life, but what will happen to civilizations over thousands of years. And he predicted that the empire would fall. So he created an empire, not an empire, a foundation to help recover from the, the empire's lost and start, you know, founding a new empire. And according to psychohistory, it would take a thousand years. He thinks he could get it down to a few hundred. And um, as this is the second book, it is not focused on the foundation. It is people living in the empire. And there is a threat, not only to the empire, but to the foundation itself. It is the mule. The mule is a man, just one man, who supposedly has special powers, which could cause not only the collapse of the empire, but the collapse of the foundation. Pretty good science fiction. I'm sort of doing this as a buddy read with Grix, etc. And he has some videos about this particular book. Now, this is this is old-fashioned science fiction, 
Do not go looking in this book for strong characterizations. You do surprisingly get a woman character in this, but she's not, not a, a realistic woman or a strong woman, although she has some critical plot points. And it, it is pretty darn good. So now we are going right into the heart of Garbagast and my men's adventure. Checkmate in Rio by Nick Carter. Nick Carter is a very extensive um, men's adventure espionage series. There are more than 100 books in this series. And this one was written in the late 60s, somewhere around there. This particular edition is from the 70s. It has that really cool retro cover. A commenter in another video says it looks a little bit like the Beatles' Yellow Submarine. I will not make any comments whether that's true or not, but it is retro. And the main character in this book is Nick Carter who is also the author of the book. So you know this is a pseudonym. And in this one, Nick Carter is being sent down to Rio because six secret agents have disappeared and he needs to discover why these people have disappeared. And with him is a beautiful co-agent. Mm -hmm -hmm. Now this is um, kind of risque. There, there's some um, graphic sex scenes in here, which makes it interesting. Now, this is like the fourth book in the series that I've read, and it is not my favorite. It has sort of an interesting plot. The sex scenes, well, you know, they're they're okay, they're, they're fine, but not my favorite in the series. I mean, it, it's good enough. I read this in two days, so um, if you like the old fashioned James Bondy sort of um, espionage, do pick up Nick Carter. You don't have to read these books in any sort of order. Um, they don't follow any continuous plot line. Each book introduces Nick Carter. He gets sent off on an adventure. He finishes the adventure. End of book. But as that is my first official Garbagas book, I am going to show you the Garbagas bingo card, where you have squares of things you want to check off for Garbagas. And I have my hot pink marker. This is an official bingo marker. I'm borrowing it from my wife. That's why it's hot pink. So let's see what I can check off. Um, a book from a series with at least 100 entries. Check. Book with nudity on the cover. Well, if you take a look at this cover, you can kind of see her butt, and you can kind of see her boobies, and if you look real, real careful, there's a touch of nipple. You're not gonna see that on any modern um, paperback, but I'm gonna say book with nudity on the cover. And book published under a pseudonym. I've got three books that I can check off. Um, book that cashes in on a moral panic. No, no moral panic in this. So that's, that's pretty much all you're going to find in Checkmate in Rio. The next book that I read for Garbagast was a digital book on my Kindle. It is technically a short story or two short stories. It is Taken by Tetris Blocks by Leonard Delaney. In this story, um, aliens have fallen to the earth. They look like multicolored blocks, and they're intelligent, and they can speak. And there is a young lady in this book who is working for a publisher, and she wants a promotion. She doesn't get her promotion because she may be just a little too sexy. So she goes and quits, and then she has sex with Tetrix blocks. The sex it's kind of lame. The story's kind of lame. The writing, kind of lame. But it is a book about having sex with Tetris blocks. Now, also included in this is a second short story, um, something about Pluto. I don't remember the title. Anyway, it is about a man who goes to Pluto in a starship and discovers that Pluto is an intelligent alien and he has sex with the planet. Apparently a planet, alien, 
can have an orifice. It can also have a gigantic penis. But the gig gigantic penis, well, I'm just, I'm just going to leave it right there because this just gets truly strange after that. So let's see what I can check off on my Garbago. Garbingo card. A dirty book. Graphic sex. Yeah. We'll check that. A book based on a video game. Yes, it has Tetris. We're going to put that in there. A book from a weirdly specific subgenre. I'm going to call having sex with non-human aliens a weirdly specific subgenre. So there we go. My Garbogist bingo card is filling out fast. Next, I read another digital book, Mother Maggot by Simon Mc... What, Henry? What do I have there? McHardy. And this is an extreme short horror novel. It is, how do I say, um, the author trying to be as disturbing as possible. There is lots of graphic violence. There is lots of graphic sex. And he, he, he's just going out for every possible thing that you can imagine. And well, we'll start off with the story. In the beginning of the story, there's a young man, probably about 14 years old, maybe 15, who's um, just lost his parents to an accident. So he goes to live with his auntie. Now his auntie is obscenely obese. She is about 500 pounds. And she introduces him to the world of sex and overeating. And you read this and go, oh, okay, this is just, it's just, it's just TMI. It's just, and it doesn't really move the plot forward any. It's just grotesqueries. It's just nasty. But, you know, the young man grows up um, because something happens to his auntie. I won't say what happens to his auntie. So then he's a young man, probably in his early 20s, and he has a, a job. Now, you're going to switch over to a um, police detective. You were introduced to her a little bit earlier, where um, she was on prom night. And on prom night, it is traditional for girls to put out. So she had to put out. But she did not enjoy it because she was a virgin, and the guy really didn't know what he was doing. And on the way home, he had an automobile accident and died. She was uninjured. But then she decided to um, discover sex with a dead man who's um, getting rigor mortis. So now she's a police officer and um, she likes her men rigorous. And these two are going to encounter each other because um, the young man has very strange sexual appetites. And he learns about a mysterious woman who is in a facility. This facility does um, experiments with drugs and products that can have unpleasant side effects. There is a woman who is a half woman and half giant maggot. And he wants to have sex with her because all of his other strange sexual appetites have not been fulfilling. Just bizarre and gross. I, I can't say it's a great book. It is something you will have to just experience if you have the stomach for it. So what do I get to check off? Well, Mother Maggot was a book that packs panic read last year. And this year, all the co-hosts are trying to celebrate the life of Pax Panic because she unfortunately died very young of cancer. So we're trying to read the books that she read. 
And this is one of the ones she read it. She really lambasted this book much better than I did. And um, sort of um, gave you some good examples of just how gross this book is. But I get to check off the center card for read a books that Pax read. Lastly, I read another digital book. I was um, so put off by um, The Mother Maggot, I decided to read a fun, dirty book. And this is Macklin's Women, Gunsmith Number One by J.R. Roberts. This is cowboy trash. This is a naughty Western. This is a dirty book. And it tells the story of a man named Clint Adams, who is a gunsmith. He's traveling around the country with his wagon, and he comes into a town who've just um, overthrown a bad man who was running it, and has been run by a new man. And um, the old man's three women. You have a 30-ish redhead, and her two daughters, an 18-year-old blonde, and a 16-year-old dark-haired beauty. And they want Clint to take them to Mexico. So he agrees because he needs the money. And what do you think is going to happen with Clint Adams and these three women on that trip down to Mexico? Well, he's going to get in some gunfights to defend them. And then there's the sex. Now, in Mother Maggot, the sex is ew. In this book, the sex is ooh. Because, you know, you got the sexy MILF in her, her early to mid-30s and her two sexy daughters. And, you know, Clint is just, he's just going to get them all. That's not a spoiler because, you know, you're setting up a dirty Western. He's going to have sex with all the women. And, you know, it's a fun book. I read it in two days or a day and a half, something like that. Um, you know, don't read it for the, the characters. Don't, you have to ignore all the, the bad plot lines because the plot lines don't fit together. And, but the sex, you know, it's pretty darn steamy sex in there. And it works as a, as a cowboy trash book. Um, I don't think you have to read all the gunsmith books in order. This happened to be the, the first book in the series. Um, and it really has no preparation for you. It's just pick up the book and start reading. Um, it is the second book in the series I read. Last year I read book 10. So if you like cowboy trash, naughty westerns, The Gunsmith is a pretty good bet and a whole lot of fun. Now, what am I also reading this week? Well, for the paperbacks from hell, I am reading Loop by Jean Thomas. I will finish this tonight. And this is a book about killer kid. Well, it has a killer kid. And it has a step back cover. And I just I just love showing this cover because it, it's so much fun. I am really enjoying this book. It's it's a very staccato style, but it's very fast paced and um getting kind of weird in the middle. There's a, there's a courtroom drama in the middle that I haven't decided that it works or not, but still I'm enjoying it. And then I'm reading some other non-trashy books. I am reading Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut for the Kurt Vonnegut Reading Group over at Voxer. If you want to join, you can go ahead and send me a message to Voxer, G-E-E-M-O-N-T-235, and I will join, add you to the Voxer group. I am also reading Absalom, Absalom by Kurt Vonnegut, also a Voxer reading group. And um, we're just reading like 90 pages of each of these books each week. And um, I have to get cracking and um, get my Faulkner in and get my Kurt Vonnegut in for this week. But that is what I have been reading for Garbagist. Thank you for watching and keep on reading trashy books.